All right. Well, I'm Devin Peterson, and I'd like to welcome you to my laboratory or my kitchen. Um, and this week in chemistry, uh, we're going to be doing experiment eight, which is applied stoichiometry. Uh, you can actually find this lab in Amy Graff's online lab manual, pages 74 and 75. And the objectives of the lab this week are to create an airbag and to determine the stoichiometry of the best airbag. Okay, so, so our goal this week is to get something that looks similar to this, <coughs> where it's tight. Um, and then our, our uh, baking soda is dissolved. So that's, that's our goal. We want something that looks just like this. Okay. Uh, so a couple of things that we're going to need, um, some of the required equipment we're going to need is first you're going to need um, a sweet apron. Uh, it doesn't have to say groom on it, but if it does, I, you know, I might be extra credit. I don't know. Um, some safety goggles or safety glasses, uh, whatever you prefer to call them. Um, some quartz size Ziploc baggies, <clears throat> and I just bought a, a couple boxes because, you know, in the lab manual, in Amy Graff's lab manual, um, it says the number will vary, and it takes you a couple tries to, to try to get to this anyway, so you're going to need more than just one or two, so I'd recommend buying a box. Um, <clears throat> you're going to need some white distilled vinegar, I have plenty of that as well as you can see, uh, some baking soda, a balance. <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> or a scale. Uh, in this situation we use a scale uh, that gets you down to uh, the nearest gram so we can get them down to the grams, get it balanced that way. And a small cup to hold the baking soda in, um, in the baggie, uh, so then we can mix it in there. Uh, for the disposal of the chemicals, uh, this week, you know, um, basically everything go down the drain. Uh, just run your water down the drain to help it get through and then take your baggies and just throw those away So it's really easy clean up this week, um, and it shouldn't be too messy uh, So the first thing that we did is well My idea or my thought when I first started doing this was that it was going to take uh, Two grams. I believe I said uh, yeah two grams of baking soda and 10 milliliters of vinegar to get this desired result and it actually took us about eight attempts, all right, about eight attempts um, to get it right, uh, to make sure that we got that mixture right. And we'll actually talk about what was the right mixture, but I can tell you right now that uh, two grams of baking soda and 10 milliliters of vinegar will not get you these desired results. So I will show you what will. Um, <clears throat> so to begin with, let's go ahead and let's get our, our materials together. And so we got our Ziploc baggies, so we'll pull one of those little baggies out, okay? We'll measure our baking soda, and to, to make the process easier, I've already measured the baking soda, um, our 5 grams of baking soda out. <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put this into the Ziploc baggie, like so, okay? Then I'll measure out our distilled vinegar to 30 or 40, 40 milliliters, I should probably say, the, the proven result for this, I should probably mention this, was 5 grams of baking soda and 40 milliliters of distilled vinegar. So that's what you're going to need for these desired results, okay? So we'll go ahead and we'll make sure that we get those right. So there's our 40 milliliters of distilled vinegar. We're going to go ahead and whoop. Yep. Oh, okay, so I, I, I almost missed a step. Um, we're going to put our, our distilled vinegar into our container here. Okay, like so. I'm going to lay my Ziploc baggie down flat. <clears throat> I'm going to put my cup of distilled vinegar in, like so. I will zip my baggie up. You got to make sure that it's sealed tight or else you'll have leaks and uh, your air will actually leak out. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to mix, mix my materials together and allow it to create that, that carbon, that CO2 there. 
and then we get our our airbag, our chemical reaction there. Okay. And so that's that's what we get, um, and that's what we were looking for, and that's what we get with five grams of baking soda and forty milliliters, forty milliliters of distilled vinegar. Um, I want to show you my my graphs here, some of my information uh, that we have. <clears throat> And I'll show you the different kinds of the, the different attempts that we had. And so you can kind of see the, the trial that we went through to get this correct. Um, on the first attempt, like I said, with my hypothesis, uh, my volume of vinegar was 10 milliliters and 2 grams of baking soda. And it produced uh, 0.0318 moles of CO2, now, which you can obviously tell is, is not enough to get the job done. And so we proved my hypothesis that it was incorrect. And it took us about eight, eight attempts to finally get the right mixture. Um, you know, going through the experiment, there was a couple times in there when I thought, well, I don't know exactly which is correct. Um, if I needed more, more vinegar to make sure that my baking soda was getting dissolved all the way, or if it was, you know, the other way, not enough baking soda to react with the vinegar. Um, so we, we tried to stick around 30 mostly with the volume of vinegar um, until we got to the point to where we decided uh, to go up to 40, 40 milliliters of vinegar. As you can see down here, um, we have a graph, uh, a line graph to show the different moles of CO2. Uh, and, and as you go through the attempts, you can kind of see <coughs> where we continue to try to increase the moles. Um, and then we had a, a decrease because we got a little too full um, decrease and then on the eighth attempt we got it just right I believe um, with the 40 milliliters and 5 grams of baking soda